Greetings, my friends. This is Merland. I'm returning to you with the first turn of war in the spectacle of perspicuity. Turn number 31 begins the war with Helheim. Let's have a look at the action. We're opening the turn and we begin with, at the top, once again, the research. I'm continuing thematurgy to get those good astral spells. Still continuing to remote site search, but here we go, the first of the fights. So let's take a look. Helheim attacked Siti. Excellent. Let's watch and see how it develops. I think Helheim will be using thugs. And we'll pause momentarily and we'll go have a look. He is. He's using a Hangadrot thug. Nicely set up, a bit on the expensive side, but that's a good unit. The pass are fine. Uh, the Death 3 is of little impact. Soul Vortex is the one death buff that thugs may use, but it has a very high fatigue cost of 40. Rushing a thug into combat with swarms using high fatigue is a high risk maneuver and often doesn't pay off well. What is used here is a Firebrand, which has an area of effect one square attack for fire which is listed in the description not clear here but you can see the details on the wiki and a solid armor piercing 10 damage plus attack for main attack so when fighting swarms you're going to be relying mainly on the uh, area of effect attack divine shield people should be quite familiar with that it has an excellent chance to tie up anyone and to break the tied up vines is a strength check so on ordinary hordes, that's extremely effective. He's got tremendous defense, and I'm pretty sure I know what he's going to buff, but let's just watch and see. To defend against that, Sadi has some solid troops. Elite guards are very hard hitting, and I think these are city guard, good defensive troops. And he's got, tucked in here, a Sauromancer. But this one only is... Actually, I think that's a hero, the Reborn. Only Death 2. Death 2 is not going to provide very many skeletons if that's his plan. Anyways, let's turn off the pause and have a watch and see how it develops. So, Helheim Blast. We'll take a quick look. He's got a Rainbow Blast. Water 4, Earth 4, Astral 4, and Nature 4. Solid Blast. Works well on a good thug. And now look at his defense and his statistics. We can have a look and see here. His attack number one is hitting with an 18. That's the fire bland. His attack number two is his horse's hoof. So pretty darn solid. Then he put up mist form. Reduces all damage to a one. With his small regeneration he should be more or less immune to anything. One thing to check is let's see how his fatigue's doing. Not bad. It's a bit on the high side and he doesn't have any very much extra reinvigoration, just the blast, so he's a net one fatigue. So there's a chance, if you can get through the mist form, of at least crippling him, but you'd need large numbers of chaff. Major Skelly Spam could take that guy out, but I don't think there's a hope here in this fight. Let's speed it up, I think we're just going to see a continuation of the same. Yep, yeah, there's running some of the city guards, took too many hits, some more running, ah, uh, this is over. And he's taken out some pretty valuable troops, those elite guards. So, not necessarily the best counter, but you have to remember, these guys have glamour. That means that Sati didn't really know where that guy was going to hit, because you can't see him on the strategic map. So I think in fairness to Sati, he just got caught, and there probably wasn't a lot he could do with it. Now in Dershid, alright, well... There was no units patrolling or stationed, just province defense. I suspect this is going to be a pretty trivial little fight. We'll take a quick look. You can see my layout. Hmm, looks like I need to revamp that one with a little bit more polypel squads up front. That single wounded guy isn't going to soak up much if I happen to hit some arrows. And he had minimal PD with the Banhurst, which is the PD commander for Hellhunt. A very excellent PD commander. I've seen these route super combatants by constantly spamming phantom warriors. Air 1 is pretty darn sweet in a, pro in a province defense commander. But, boom, that was it. So there wasn't a heck of a lot to see there. 
Lizard Bat Marsh. Looks like I'm doing the same shenanigans. I've sent a massive horde. And there was nothing. See, this is more like how I prefer to set up. A nice staggered batch of little polypels up front. These guys are set to attack immediately. Those guys back there in the large squads were set to hold and attack anything that breaks through. So that was, boom, gone. One more fight, a couple more. Hmm, looks like pretty much the same thing. We'll have a quick look. I think it's safe to see we're going to see identical response. There we go. Yep, trivial. Fast forward, bang, done. Okay, not going to spend more time on that. Pygmy bat woods. So I sent out, that was the one, nope, we haven't looked at that one yet. I have to kind of follow this in a systematic way when I'm recording video or things get a little out of whack. Very much the same setup. I'm just staggering which side I set my priests and abolists and gibbeti on, but beyond that, it's pretty straightforward. Again, trivial PD, and it's going to be gone in moments. We'll quick fast forward, bang, boom. Sadly, no hope for him. And a fifth raid. Same thing. Zoom in, have a quick look. So you can see I'm using a pretty consistent methodology and looks like I have a good chance to crack some forts. So let's go see what I did after I take I took them. Okay, here I've taken a single polypal and put them into the garrison which will allow me to maintain the siege until he decides to try to break out. Well, that might get me a couple turns of tax 200. I'm sure he'll notice as soon as I move away going for this other province. But hopefully, I'll at least get one turn. It's not a huge amount of income, but I can crank his unrest up a bit, and I can grab a few extra gold. Better than pillage. I've taxed at 200. I can't set province defense, so that's my best option. Over here, I'm going to try to take this fort. I'm bringing in another group. That group can come on top and put tremendous pressure on the fort walls. And I'm going to do another raid, staying on the shore, so I can sneak back into the water and get out of harm's way if he brings out something tough. With this group here in the Pygmy Batwoods. I've set defense at 1, tax at 200. I don't expect to hold anything, and I have no intentions of holding anything at this time. Same thing here. And I think that's covered it. I'm going to raid over here because I can go from this sea province, uh, this coastal, to this coastal and get out of the way. A few other things going on. I'm forging a stone sphere. Now, some people may not know much about the stone sphere, but I love it. The stone sphere gives you a free, no gem cost, astral window. Astral window allows you to look inside of sieged forts. This is a major advantage. You can cast it with a mage, but it runs the risk, if it's spotted by an astral mage on the defender side, of becoming feeble-minded. However, the item doesn't have that problem, and you put it on a scout or an independent commander, and you don't care if it gets feeble-minded, even if the mechanics work that way. It also gives you kind of a free mage to toss those around, and it pays off quickly. It costs 10 gems, so in 10 turns of use, you've pretty much paid for it. The one disadvantage is stone spheres have a very small chance to horror mark. Over some time that can be an issue, so there's a little micro. You want to kind of check those commanders every 10 turns, get rid of them, put the stone sphere on a new one and send them off to die somewhere. Or whatever you want to use them for. But there's no point in risking your stone sphere versus a horror attack, and it sure isn't worth bodyguarding an independent commander. One other thing. If you folks remember, I've got Fetalith, my heroic mind lord, with his lovely Astral 5 random. Well, looks like last turn, and I must have missed it in my way I've been setting up my saved turns, he built a crystal coin. Well, now he's going to make a Ring of Sorcery. Ring of Sorcery provides plus one to all of the um, non-elemental paths or the sorcery paths so that's astral death nature and blood magic add that to the crystal coin I'm going to put them up to an astral seven and then i'll also make one rig of wizardry 
I don't want very many rings of wizardry. They're very expensive. Rings of sorcery can be of some advantage. So I think we've covered the basics. Most of the rest of my action is continuing as before. I keep some overtax. I've set up a few patrollers. And this is turn 31. So hopefully in five turns my pretender will arrive. And I'll start moving him towards the front or towards where I can put him to good use. Something that's important, he's an immortal. You'll see when he comes out, he's a master lich. So I want to limit using him, if I use him offensively, to areas where I have good, strong, solid dominion. And I think that summarizes turn number 31. Turn number 32 will have a significant more amount of fighting. And if I can remember correctly, going from the past, there's a couple of very exciting fights. So thanks once again. I hope you enjoyed this summary of the first turn of the war, and I hope to see you in game. Goodbye, my friends.